I'll read. I'll read a little bit of it. So Acts 15, and verse three. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenix and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved, even as they. And then it goes on. I said, I'm not going to read the whole thing. We read that last time, and you can read it on your own time. We are, will again be in Acts 15 and Galatians 2, flipping back and forth. So if you want to put a marker there. And we need to remember what we're looking at. We're looking at this, this big meeting that has happened now, um, where Paul's down in, in Antioch, and he's teaching. And there's some people from come down and say, hey, uh, you guys need to be circumcised to be saved. And it, as we, it turns out, we find out James didn't send them. And and I tried to make the, make the point last time that using some of the same phraseology, these are people that were actually not part of the little flock. They were just trying. They were actually uh, just people putting, trying to put people under the law. Period. And we're going to see in a minute here. There was a, a subset that wanted to put them under the law, but was still believers. I take this group that came to Antioch because of some of the phraseology to not be believers. They look like they were believers, but they in my mind, James wasn't strong enough against these people, so that he went. They went down and cracked the whip. And James says, "We didn't send them." When the verse says they they were the believing Pharisees, wouldn't that indicate that they were of the little flock? That's the group I'm going to be talking about in a second. That I, that that was still in Jerusalem, and and was believers, but saying the same thing. So I think you've got you, you've really got. You got a bunch of people here, a bunch of different groups here. You got the one group that left the, them and went down to Antioch and said, You have to be circumcised. As I read it, I take that to be a group that wasn't part of the little flock. They looked like they were, maybe thought they were, but they went out under their own authority, right? James, it should be Peter, but James had the authority by this time. And they went out without any authority. But now we're going to come back, and you're right. In a minute, we're going to read about the Pharisees that believed. Well, right. the Pharisees that believed. What did they believe? That Jesus was the Messiah. So what's that make them? The little flock. Right. Okay. And they still had that same issue. So you're, they're saying the same thing, but they're different, they're different groups. One's going to hell. One's going to go into the, the earthly kingdom. But they're still saying the same thing to Paul. And, 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 and that's why this is such a big deal. And the reason I'm spending so much time on this is this is, is one of the things where you will consistently hear the attacks made on Paul. Well, you guys think Paul had his own thing, but he clearly went up to Jerusalem and got the got got a, got the approval of Peter, and Peter gave his blessing. Well, first of all, you're misreading the thing because James is in charge. But even at that, he didn't go up, and we'll we'll see that as we go through. He didn't go up to get permission. He went up to tell them something they didn't know. No, and, when when he uh, when there was that dispute, he didn't. And I, I don't remember how to it now, but he didn't go along with it at all. No, he stood his ground. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. And remember, we looked last time at why did the, 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 those those people that went down to talk to, to talk to Paul and, and tell him that this, they had to be circumcised? They decided, along maybe with Paul or maybe not with Paul, but they decided that Paul and Barnabas needed to go back and talk to the apostles, right, because, to settle that issue. But then we also looked and saw that well, God. Paul went up by revelation. <laughs> And Paul went up to communicate the gospel. He didn't go up to deal with the issue of circumcision, though that would have been part of telling his gospel. But his issue was to go up and say, Peter, James, things have changed. Let me tell you what's going on. Now, part of that would have been the circumcision issue. But these guys, you know what they're thinking. You need to go talk to James and Peter because they're going to set you straight. And Paul goes on up with, I know something different. Yeah. And and because that, you're exactly right. You know, it says Paul didn't give them even for an hour. The thing about this trip, I mean, we, we talk about this sometimes. He didn't get up there in 20 minutes, right? It took him 
Antioch to Jerusalem, it probably took them a couple of days to get there. Mm. We're going to see here, there's a, there's, a, there's a series of meetings that go on. There's just, just not one meeting. There's a mm. series of meetings that go on. But even without that, he, he has no tolerance for this. Think about what he says in early Galatians. Let him be accursed. Yeah, now, the accursed strong. is not sent to hell. The cursed is separated. Somebody stands up. First of all, the people come down to Antioch, and he immediately, the, the very strong words are, no small dissension and disputation with the people that came down. Mm. Then he gets up there, and in Galatians he says, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour. He said, you know, he probably bore bear with him for a few minutes, and he saw where I was going to say, okay, we're not even going to entertain that. And, you know, you've seen that happen in this room with, a, with one certain individual. They keep, well, you know, I listen to you. Won't you like, if you're going to just say stuff that's so far afield incorrect, uh, I'm not even, we're not even going to, to entertain it. And, and sometimes that, that, that can be difficult. It's a little easier in this room, but when, with you, when you're with family and, and friends and loved ones, it's not so easy, right, right. To, be, to be that bold. It can be a little intimidating because you just want to keep the peace and eat the turkey dinner or have a good Christmas or, or whatever it is you're together <laughs> to have, right? You know, everybody got that message, don't start a fight this year, you know. <laughs> but at the same time, if you spend a whole day allowing false doctrine, especially if, if you, and I'm sure you guys all around your, your family, they all know that you guys are the ones to study your Bible. So they get back and they go, well, you know, they study their Bible a lot and they believe a little different. They didn't say anything different, so I must not have been too far off. He came back in the next morning and he, he asked me, he says, did I offend you? And I said, no, you didn't. You didn't offend me. And uh, But he, he talked quite a ways and then finally he said something about that you wouldn't listen to him. You wouldn't listen to his scripture. And then he wanted to start on me and I wouldn't listen to him either. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he said, well, you're just like David. <laughs> oh. uh, uh, you should take that as a compliment in that sense only okay <laughs> generally speaking that would be a pretty big insult but, but you, don't be scared to hear somebody's point of view if it's different than yours if nothing else it'll try your faith it, it, it'll uh, that's a bad it, it'll test your beliefs however at the same time you can't permit that doctrine to be taught. You can't permit it to be out there like, well, there's all truth is relative. You know, right? That's on the way. Everybody, ha the world will tell you all, everybody has their own truth. What do Christians tell you? Well, that's not the way I see it. I believe the Bible says this. That's hogwash. The Bible is the Bible. I just right. I was I just looked on Facebook as as we were as we were coming in here and it said you know what you can understand your Bible because God's not the author of confusion. Don't ever let anybody come by and tell you you can't understand your Bible. You need Hebrew. You need Greek. Or you need some guy in a hundred dollar suit or a thousand dollar suit and eighteen letters behind his leg in his name. You can read it, but yeah. th this issue of interpretation, unfortunately, has become well. I think something, and now I'm going to go find the verses to back up my position. Mm -hmm. And you can do it. If, if you give me a position, give anybody in this room a position and 20 minutes, I bet you can go find verses to defend that position, regardless of what the position is. Yeah, but you gotta take it out of context. That's right. That's why you That's have exactly to rightly right. divide. That's exactly right, It's not right, just knowing Bill. your Bible, it's when, knowing how to divide. When you rightly divide. divide the King yeah. James Bible, you take so much of that interpretation or that personal, that personal prejudice that we all have. I mean, let's admit, we all have our personal prejudices. We all have our personal inclinations. We all bring those to the scripture. Don't be scared of that. But when you rightly divide the King James Bible, you're going to get rid of a lot of that. You're just going to believe what the book says. That's one of the reasons why there's so many different versions out there because every every denomination, every religion needs one that promotes their doctrinal position. Right. One of the things I appreciate so much about the King James Bible is, for the most part, I haven't seen any evidence that any of the translators had any great appreciation for right division and yet it's still in there right they didn't take it out you know it the niv they have a gender you know there's a gender free bible that is the niv <laughs> and i don't know that it lasted but that's just i know it's, it's just it's silliness yeah um is it the jehovah's witness bible where they make jesus a created god 
Is, is or is that the Mormons? Yeah, yeah. no, it, it's the, the Jehovah's Witness Jehovah's Bible. Bible. They have their own Bible because more than anything else, they needed to change John, change John, change John one one. Right. Yeah, the New World Translation. The, the New Yeah, there it is. And and they have to they have to change the what uh, Jesus said on the cross in order to keep Jesus from being God. How? Yeah, and what if you if you would. Don't do this. If you got time to do what I'm about to say, do something, do a better study. But if you were to ever study that Bible out, you'd see that they miss a lot of the verses that they tried to get rid of. Because you go back in the Old Testament and and things that are just look like they're sitting there. If you compare them with a New Testament version, oh yeah, that that one says Jesus is God, and they forget to take those ones out. Well, that's they the thing them. because God wrote this Bible; it all makes sense beginning to end. Right. And you're right. When they start changing it, then then it would be confusing. Well, that yeah. translation was was translated from the Sinaiticus and the you know the the same stuff that the Catholics got their Bible from mm -hmm. and so they're going to leave a lot of it out yeah you guys don't need to turn turn here but just think about Paul not not dealing with it for an hour now not not giving these people any place he writes to Timothy that in at the in second Timothy Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. You know, he, he, he pulls it out to Timothy. He told Timothy earlier, from a from a child you've known the scriptures, the right. holy scriptures. That's the Old Testament he's talking about. Right. Now at the end of his life, when he's turning his ministry over to Timothy, he tells him, Okay, stay, hold fast the form of sound words. Don't let go. Hold hold, hold on to them. Just pick them up, hold them fast. Don't let me pull them from you. But then he go. Then he defi defines those which thou has heard of me. In faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. See, it, it's all truth. But what Paul's doing back there in in Galatian in in a, um, Jerusalem in, in Acts fifteen is what we're to be doing now. And what what we need to do when people bring up these other things and try and get us off the thing is hold fast to the form of sound words. When people start telling you, well, you need to go do this because Jesus said that, and you go, you know, but Jesus wasn't talking to you. And when you try and do that, it's not going to work anyhow. You need to come back and say, whoa, 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 whoa. let's go back to our apostle. You're not denigrating the Lord Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ that gave Paul what he wrote down. You need to stand for that and, and get rid of the confusion and 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 understand that the, that conviction. You need to have that conviction. And if you can't have that conviction, quite frankly, you need to get in and study the Word. Yeah. You can't wait for Sunday or Tuesday or Thursday or Wednesday or, 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 or whatever, you know, gentleman comes in here and teaches with Glenn on Sundays and I talk to him throughout the week sometime he says well, you know I'm just not smart I don't get this stuff and yet he comes in here on Sunday and gets up and uses that board you know what because he's uh, he is getting it he is starting to study he, and you know what I'm talking about and but he's holding he's start he's starting to hold fast the, the form of sound words mm -hmm. he can teach it because he understands it because right. he gets in and he studies he it and it, it works yeah. out exactly and and that's how it's meant to work everybody's where you're at Everybody has the knowledge that they have now, and right. that's okay. Stand in that. Just understand. Make sure it's rightly divided. So anyhow, wow, that's a lot to you say about there, that. Huh? Yeah, I get there. <laughs> so that's what's that, that's what's going on. Um, yeah, I'm just going to keep going. So. As, as we come, we, we see this. Oh, I know where I was eventually going with this. This is the passage that people will use to, to, to attack Paul's distinctive ministry, mm. which is so interesting because what's happening in this passage? Well, he's going up to Jerusalem to set everybody straight. Right, but why? <laughs> why does he have to go up to set people straight? How, well, what, 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 what caused that to have to happen? Yeah, because people's coming in perverting his teaching. Right. Trying to go back under the law. Right. Well, people were coming out saying, Paul's not teaching the right stuff. Mm -hmm. You're not saved by faith. You're saved by law circumcision. Works, yeah. Yeah. They're attacking the distinctive ministry of Paul. They're attacking his authority. The exact same things that happen today. And this is the passage that they're going to use today to attack it. Well, see, Paul just went up to get Peter's approval. No, he didn't. We're going to see here, Peter should have been a whole... If, if that was the case, Peter should have been a whole lot more vocal than he was. Peter stands up maybe in frustration and has something to say, but then he sits right back down and lets James take over. 
And this yeah, it sounds like it. he sat there and listened for some time before he finally stood up. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and this is the last time we see Peter in a book of Acts, by the wow, way. Wow, interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, let's just look at a couple of things here. Get um, get Matthew twenty eight. Matthew twenty eight and Mark sixteen. There you go. <laughs> that, that's great. That's absolutely great. Matthew 28 and verse 19. You guys ever want to know where this is? The easy way to remember it is Matthew. Uh huh. And 28. Oh, never mind. I was going to give you a, a, a good way to remember it, but it, it would have been false. No one's been bad math, so let's just forget I said anything. Okay. <laughs> Matthew twenty eight nineteen says, Go ye therefore, is Jesus Christ talking to the twelve, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Look over at Mark 16. And verse 15. And he, he, again, the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve, said unto them, Go ye into the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And he goes on. Jesus Christ sent Israel to go to the world. They were supposed to take this ministry, this gospel of the kingdom, and go out to the world. And then you just saw Jesus said, Teaching them all the things that I command. Well, part of that was Moses' law. Right. So when these people come down and say, Hey, you got to be circumcised to be saved. And we said it last week. I'm not going to talk about it a whole lot here they were scriptural they could mm-hmm. quote verses hey moses said it even the lord jesus christ even jesus christ said it but they weren't dispensational and that that, that that that's the trap so many people fall into they they follow a scripture that doesn't apply to them not understanding that it doesn't apply in the dispensation in which they live so what you see here happening though is paul's going to come up and say i'm going to the gentiles that great commission that you guys were you know that was the term came up in the 1800s, but the, the commission that Jesus Christ gave you, I'm doing it. But I'm going out on a different commission. I'm going out as an ambassador. I'm going out proclaiming the grace of God. I'm going out and proclaiming salvation by grace through faith. I'm going out proclaiming that you're saved through the fall of Israel. You know, I got a question. Yeah. In Matthew and Mark, well, the four Gospels. So they're, they're told to go out into all the world. Mm-hmm. But it also says that they could start in Jerusalem, go to Judea and, and, and Samaria, and proselyte as you go, or, or not proselyte, but... but uh, the only way that could come into being is if everybody accepted what they were. That's right. That's exactly right. And that's why you, that, that's why you never see it happen. It never happened. What we just read never happened. You guys have heard me say before, nobody in Scripture, nobody was baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right. Ever. There's not a single record of that ever happening. The, with with what Peter's going to talk about here in a couple of verses, with the exception of Peter going to Cornelius, they never. There's no record of them going to the Gentiles. <laughs> Philip went to the uh, the eunuch, but the the eunuch was already reading. He was already been in Jerusalem looking for the answers and couldn't find, couldn't get it. Was that eunuch a Jew? He was a uh, Ethiopian. Well, so is that a Gentile? No, that was yes. a Gentile. Yeah, that'd be okay. a Gen- yeah. yeah, that that would be a Gentile. Okay. Yeah, he would he would he was he was the master, just like the Queen of Sheba would represent mm-hmm. her. 
he he was a master. He was a leader in Ethiopia. So he would have he would have been doing trying to do essentially the Abrahamic covenant, coming representing oh. his nation to bless oh. Israel. He goes to Israel looking, hey, show me the word of God. I'm ready. Well, and he after, couldn't find it. After Jesus had commissioned them to go out, he was sent back into heaven. And then later on, it says, and when they went out, they went to the Jews only. That's right. So this is after they were to go to Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria to the Jew only. Now, why? First of all, why, 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 why Jerusalem? Why, why, uh, talk about a few different ways. Why Jerusalem and then Judea and then Samaria? Because you got your two southern tribes and your two northern tribes. Here's Jerusalem, here's Judea, and here's Samaria. To be progressive then. Right. Okay. okay. Where's the headquarters? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. You got to get Jerusalem saved. Okay. Once Jerusalem saved, then what you can you do? Then you can go to Judea, which is the two southern is, tribes, right? Yeah, essentially would be the the, the 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 southern part. And then once that's saved, declared righteous, then you can go to Samaria. Right? If you're going to have a revival, we're going to start in Portland, mm. and then we're going to do Oregon, and then we're going to do the West Coast as a, yes. and, and then and then we're going to take it to the heathen and the rest of the nation. Okay. Mm. Because what is what does Israel have to be? They have to be the nation. Nation of priests, right? So you get the nation saved, yeah. Then you can go out, and so Bill said they weren't. This was not a a, a outreach where they're going out to the world saying, "Hey, come believe Jesus is Savior." This is one where they're going to the Jews saying, "Change your mind, get get baptized." That ceremonial cleansing. So that we can be that nation of priests and then we can go to the world. But it never happened. They couldn't even get out of Jerusalem. It's Paul that goes to the world. Mr. Stan wrote a book called Our Great Commission, or Our Commission. And it's all about that change, the end of the Great Commission. In, in Galatians 2, we read a little further than we have, and we see where Peter and James, they've stopped the Great Commission. They say, okay, we're done. So, and, and the, so you're really starting to see this now. Paul goes up, says, "I got a message for the Gentiles." So, what we've determined why, why the succession of the ge geography, why did they need to be saved so that they could be that nation of priests? Why didn't it happen? Why didn't it happen? Well, because the little remnant started dying off. Yes, but there should be. But but if it had worked the way it was designed to work, you'd have, everybody would. Can you it, state it, that question again. Why didn't, why why didn't the nation take their message to the world? They rejected the Messiah. There you go. Okay. They've been they they because of unbelief. Because of unbelief, they could not fulfill their commission. There's nothing wrong with what Jesus told them to do. They didn't believe. Yeah, if they'd have done it, it'd have worked. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. If they'd have had that heart of belief, it would have worked. Again, once again, proving that God's got to do for us what we can't do for ourselves. Now, he's not, that, we're talking about the little clock there, but but it, it had because of unbelief. So now Paul's going to go up and say, and, and essentially, I mean, it doesn't say it in the scripture, but you can kind of you know read what he says. He's de God's now declared Israel in unbelief. Mm -hmm. Now think about that. Okay, they've stoned Stephen. They've declared an unbelief. What does that mean for the rest of the world? If the world gets saved through Israel, and Israel can't, Israel has fallen. Then the world can't get saved. <laughs> yeah, then the, the world's world got a real can. problem, right? We have a problem. Paul comes along with a new, with a, with a new program, and he's going to go up and communicate that. So that's what you're seeing here, and we need you need to be very cognizant that that this this mission to the world, if you will is now placed in Paul's hands. Not the 12 anymore, but in Paul's hands and then and his helpers. When he goes up there, though, it's very interesting. Did you ever think about who he took with him? Who? Paul. Paul, yeah, look over at Galatians 2. Acts tells you that he took uh, Barnabas with him. But look at Galatians 2. He took Titus. Yeah, there you go. 2 verse 1. Then 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Let me just write this. I think this, I think this is pretty neat. Paul is the dispensation of grace guy, right? He's the one that tells us about the dispensation of grace. He's the one that tells us about the body of Christ, right? Yes. What's distinctive about the body of Christ versus in the but now versus time past? What's the difference between the body of Christ and the little flock? No law. Right. But who's in the little flock? Jews. Jews. Who's in the body of Christ? Gentile. Jew and Gentile, Jew and right? Gentile. Well, yes, but... No difference. There is no Jew. There is no Gentile in the church of the body of Christ. Jew and Gentile alike. What's Paul? He's a, he's Jew. He's a Jew, right? And, and a Roman. And a Gentile. And Roman, yeah. both. Who did Paul take with him to this meeting? Barnabas. Barnabas, who is a Jew. Jew. Okay. And who else? Titus. Who is a? I have no idea. He's a Greek. Oh. He took to the to the big meeting. He took a representative of the very church of body of Christ, what he's going to begin to proclaim. The issue with Titus. Look over at. Um, well, you're in Galatians 2, right? That'll work. Galatians 2, verse 3. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. So you see, you see there, he's a Greek. So he takes with him the very embodiment of what he's, built, what he's building, or the Lord Jesus Christ is building through his ministry. Do you remember what we talked about? What did what was the really the, the issue that was causing this meeting to have to happen? It was circumcision, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Paul over here in Galatians says that meeting was so it, it was a big deal. But they and they tried to compel to compel Titus to get circumcised. So he comes up there. They have this big discussion, but Titus won't be. Think about the encouragement. Again, when you remember these are real people, think about the encouragement that would have been to Titus. He goes up, there's this big meeting about circumcision. You don't think he was a little nervous? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, this Paul guy's right. <laughs> and uh, you go through all that, and then he's like, uh, no, I'm not. He understood, he understood the grace message. Now, come with me, if you would, over to Titus 1, and look what happens. He's talking about the qualifications of a bishop in Titus 1 and verse 9. He tells Titus, Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. If the people are talking about doctrine that they shouldn't be talking about, you do it through sound doctrine. You don't do it through your personal opinion. Mm -hmm. You don't do it through I think. I don't, you don't do it through, well, my life experience has led me to. Mm -hmm. You do it through sound doctrine. That, by the time you get here, you should understand that sound. when Paul says sound doctrine, he's talking about the things that he has written. So that's what we're talking about. Okay. Uh, be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, the Judaizers, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things that they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. Now, I haven't used this verse, and I'll probably will start using it, because I'm pretty hard on these guys that get up and teach the prosperity gospel and law and legalism. And that verse right there says they're doing it for filthy lucre's sake. Mm -hmm. And that's not nice. And Well, that's the Holy doing. Spirit said it through the penny of the Apostle Paul. But what I want you to think about Titus. He's been left in Crete. He's setting up this church. The people are coming in, again, with the circumcision issue. But he's already been to the meeting. And he was the subject of the meeting. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm not going to do it. And Paul mm -hmm. said, he's not going to do it. Doesn't need it. There's no point in it. Mm -hmm. You think that didn't leave an oppression with Titus so that he could stand up in this moment? If he'd have yeah. done that, he was putting himself back under the law. That's right. Exactly. You could, he could not have done it. As, well, that's true. And, but he also could not have gotten circumcised as a walk of faith. And I know that's tough to hear. I mean, there's a lot of things people say, well, I do by faith. They don't. 
They do because they actually, out of, if he would have got circumcised, it would have been in unbelief, in unfaithfulness, because that's not the program for him anymore. Mm -hmm. So I find it very interesting that he takes a Jew yeah, and a Gentile is, who hasn't yeah. been circumcised to the meeting, and Barnabas is a Jew's Jew. He's already sold his property on the island on the island of uh, Cyprus and laid the money at the apostles' feet. Mm. And he's going to come and he's going to labor with Paul. Of course, they have their falling out. You know, they go their separate ways for a while and then come back together. Well, along with that, same thing as like where if he had gotten circumcised, he's going back under the law from that. Okay, but the same thing then happens today, though. For by grace you say through faith, and the different denomination teaches this plus. That's right. You gotta get your life straightened out first, right? And then get saved. But well, you get saved, and now you gotta be yeah. good. Yeah. Well, I'm mm -hmm. glad it ain't that way. Yeah. I never got there. <laughs> I know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. And and even if they can give you a clear message of salvation, the moment you get saved, they mess it up. Yeah. They go put you back under the law. What was the thing we read about the Pharisees? Search heaven and he search heaven and earth for a new believer, and then you make them twice the the, the son of I'm messing it up, but twice the child of the devil once he gets saved. Get a guy saved by faith, understand what all the, the the complete work of the finish of the cross for a person's salvation, and then say, okay, but that wasn't good enough for the way you live your life. Now you ain't got to go do it by yourself. And here's 635 laws written by Moses that you need to go do. That's how you live unto God. Forget it. Mm -hmm. You can't do it. I got... Yeah, Israel couldn't. Have it. What makes it 2,000 pages of my Bible that shows me I can't do the yeah. law. Why would I think I'm better than Moses or Abraham or any of those guys back there getting me fired up guys well he sure shot me down I I thought he was I thought he knew it all <laughs> perfect and well teach me Dave <laughs> they so it, it, it they had to change because Israel was now in unbelief they'd rejected the word of God it's Paul now that was going to go to the world with that new commission mm -hmm. that ambassadorship grace not law ambassador not priest right you don't need yep. to go to a priest talk to god whenever you want yeah and that's a you big change Spirit from in what you. the jews were doing that's yeah. exactly right it's exactly right um so come back go back to ephesians <laughs> acts acts 15 i'm really not going verse by verse just trying to get an overview and i've uh -huh. made notes and Every time I read the chap chat through the chapter during the week, I go, oh, you know, I got to talk about that. And now my notes are all messed up. So I'm. <laughs> but we'll jump around a lot here. Look at verse uh, four. The interesting word that I just want you to. What, what I'm really trying to bring out here, too. And I, I really hope what we understand. And it's, it's great. This is a great place to do it because there, there's so much of humanity that comes out. So often we think these are not real people. That they were there, they didn't have personalities. That they just okay, God said do it, and I do it and did it. Or this guy said, and it just went up, and, and we read a verse, and we think, well, it happened like that. Well, I want you to see some, an emotion in, the, in a certain verse here. Verse four. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. They were received of the church. Remember the first time Paul went up there, they were scared to death of him. Mm. Look over at look over at Acts nine. Yeah. Right. Acts nine verse twenty six. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him. And believe mm -hmm. not that he was a disciple. Mm -hmm. You don't get that feeling of being received, do you? Mm -hmm. you, you know, and when, when you receive somebody, you're you excited. Trust them. Right? Yeah, you're we not went, afraid. We went of to them. Colorado and, and, and saw April's family, and that lives over there, and they received us. They didn't make us stay outside. They weren't scared of us, and and but they said, "Yeah, come on in." And you know, they received us. It was you're wonderful. Preached at him, yeah. <laughs> I had not preached at him yet. Uh, look over to Acts twelve. So this is this in in Acts eleven. Verse 29 and 30, Paul takes the money up to them with Barnabas. Oh, yeah. And there's really no evidence that he met anybody except maybe some of the elders. 
But look at what look what was going on at that time in verse 12. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded, proceeded further to take Peter. Then were the days of unleavened bread. So the first time he goes up, everybody's scared of him. The second time he goes up, you got you can't think they were real happy. They they were running for their lives. You know, this guy Herod, he killed one. And he said, that worked out pretty good for me. I'm going to grab another one. So you got to think there probably weren't a whole lot of people there because you don't see any names where huh. Paul comes up and says, yeah, I met with somebody. Yeah. So now, but he, now he comes up here in Acts 15 and he is actually received this time. And we saw as he went up that they That's were... That's a big deal. Oh, yeah. Interesting. You know, if you look at verse 3, too, he went through Phoenix and Samaria declaring what was going on and, and all the brethren had great joy about that. So Phoenix and Samaria, that's going to be right here, coming down here. I don't know if I have that map. I don't think I do. Oh, yeah, probably right here. Yeah. So here's Jerusalem. Where's Jerusalem, Dave? Right. right. There's uh, there's Jerusalem. So here's Samaria, and here's Phoenix. Phoenicia. So he's coming down through here, and as he went through here, declaring what was going on, the brethren were happy; they were rejoicing. So you do see, begin to see a change in the heart of the the of some of these believing Jews. That hey, the word of God is going to the Gentiles. Now you see a lot that are very jealous about it, don't understand it. You know, so how can that happen if it's not going through us? Okay, so we come to the meeting. He actually gets into town, and they have this meeting. It's interesting, too, where this meeting is. This meeting is in Jerusalem, which is where Paul left, right? He was in Damascus. Or he was on his way to Damascus, and he'd left Jerusalem with those writs, those, those arrest warrants to go out and get the people. He comes in, and they're going to kill him, so he has to leave again. This time he comes to Jerusalem, though, and there's peace. So it, it, it's almost like that, that apostate nation has kind of lost its power, lost its, its the fear. Because now they're, they're meeting openly. We're going to see this is, a, this is an open meeting. Mm -hmm. And he goes back and he's not scared. And, and the apostles are out in the open again. Everybody's back. Um, so it's interesting how, how it really does seem that, that times have changed. Um, when he left there, he was bringing bringing the members of the little flock and he was just doing terrible things to them in fact if you look at it look over it in Acts but would not 15 the word got around about Paul? sure absolutely and that's my point would things would change teeth. right now yes but the Pharisees probably would have been, been the, yeah. the unbelieving Pharisees because he talks about believing Pharisees they might not have cared about the Gentiles but they, but you, you would think they would still care about James and Peter and that bunch. Yeah. But it seems like they haven't, because one thing we read over in Acts nine, when when Paul after Paul's conversion, we read that okay, all the churches had peace after that. So it's almost like when when Paul's conversion happened, the Pharisees kind of lightened up, that those, those unbelievers, and they, it's almost like Paul was maybe the well, Paul was chief of sinners. Right. It, it's like once they lost Paul, they kind of lost their energy and think about think about some of the great war the wars that we won you know what would happen in some of our wars if our commander had said you know what i'm done i'm i'm gonna go fight for the other side well, wouldn't you when that oh. think about some of that this is some of the great yeah. leaders Patton. what what what, what, <laughs> what do you think what, how, how do you think this would have gone on the eve of desert storm schwarzkopf comes up and says yeah george i'm gonna go fight for saddam <laughs> It's a silly thing, I understand, but you can see how that wouldn't that oh, that would just be deflating. So uh, we just didn't appreciate that he comes he comes to Jerusalem basically freely. He's not hiding. The little flock doesn't appear to be hiding, or wanting yeah, or wanting to harm him or anything. Exactly. Um, in fact, look at verse fifteen twenty five, in the way they describe. This is in James's letter. He says, It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. Yeah, beloved. Beloved. Beloved Barnabas and Paul. Well, it's a lot different than what we saw in Acts 9. Oh, it? yeah. Where they were scared of him. 
Okay, so a lot of times we read this and we think it's just one meeting. But it's many meetings. And I counted, I've gone through the two accounts in Acts 15 and Galatians 2, and I've decided there's either four, five, six, or seven meetings that, 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 that all occur. Mm, wow. Now, the reason I even care about this is because I want you guys, want us all to understand that these are real people and they're having discussions and, and, and some things going back as they're trying to figure some things out. And it all affects us in the end. It does all affect mm -hmm. us in the end. One thing that I will highlight probably more next week is, and I want you to, to start to notice is, think back to, to Acts 2. We'll read it next next time. But in Acts 2, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke in tongues. Mm -hmm. Right? They were they were the Holy Spirit took control of them and they did what they had to do. Here we see a lot of discussion going on amongst themselves. Oh. Disputings, discussions, oh. conversings, judgments being made. What does that tell you about the role of the Holy Spirit compared to the way it was on Pentecost in the little flock? Well, not as active. He's, he's he, not doing the, the he's work. He's not picking. He's, yeah. not, he's not directing them to, to, to be perfect in their decision making. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing? You're seeing the decline of the little flock. You're seeing the, the, the decline of the, of the authority of that group and that Pentecostal mm -hmm. program. You're seeing the decline in the authority of the prophetic program and the rise now you're starting to see in the mystery program. Mm -hmm. Again, here it is. As we go through Acts and we see that, that the prophecy program, Israel's program, in decline. Mm -hmm. which is what the point of the book of Acts is. Right, right. If, if we were still in Acts 15, living under the Pentecostal church, and if we were in Acts 15, we would be today. And when I say Pentecostal church, I mean in the Acts 2, there wouldn't be these discussions. No. Peter would just stand up, and James wouldn't be part of the deal. We'll still see that. But Peter would just say, that's wrong. This is right. Now move on. There wouldn't be all this back and forth and discussions and whatnot. So we need to really uh, see what's going on there. So you may not care about this, but I think it's interesting. So here's here's the meetings that I came up with. We'll start in Galatians 2. Okay. Funny thing about this, I don't know if it's funny, but I hate meetings. I hate meetings. <laughs> I had one two weeks ago. It took an hour and a half, and I just, I just, oh, terrible. So, for me to be discussing seven meetings is ridiculous. But anyhow, Galatians 2 2. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of rep reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. So when Paul goes up, what's he do? He has a private meeting. Right. With who? Peter. Yeah, Peter and James. Right, those are of reputation. Okay. Okay. And then you look at Acts, go back to Acts 15. And verse 4. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. That's not a private meeting. Right? That's a public meeting. Paul goes in and just declares to the entire church, this is what's going on. This is a public meeting. So he comes up, communicates privately with Peter and James. Uh -huh. And then, or those would be a summary reputation it says there. And then he has this public one, which is the whole church assembly. Go back to Galatians 2. Verse 4. That because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection. No, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. So now this this is may still be this meeting, but this meeting now breaks down because some false brethren walk in. 
and they've got some things to say. So maybe we'll just call that meeting 2B. So he gets up there, he meets privately, then he goes to the church and he just, he, he, we've all been in a church where the missionary comes back and the missionary tells you what the great work they've been doing. And I don't mean in a bad way, I mean they're just, hey, this is, this is what's been going on for the last so long, we're getting saved and we're building this. And So Paul, that's what Paul's doing. I'm, we're out there, the Gentiles are getting saved, let me tell you about what's going on and the church seems to be rejoicing. Then these false brethren come in and say, yeah, I know. that's not right. And they try and take steal away their liberty. Then look at the uh, Galatians, so you're in Galatians? Look at yeah. uh, verse 6. And so Paul, and Paul won't put up with these people. No, not for an hour. Right. 6. But of those, of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me, God accepteth no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. But contrary, when they saw that the gospel of the, of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the uncircumcision was unto Peter. So you see, now I take that, you see where it says, but of these who seem to be somewhat? If you come over to back to Acts 15, I take the, that to match up with the people in verse 5 that Glenn was talking about. There rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was oh. needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Those can't be the false brethren because false brethren would be unbelievers. Right. Can we agree with that? Right. That's what that friend, that, that wouldn't be. Okay. Right. And in verse 7, he talks about they understood that the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. So I don't take the, the people, the, those who seem to be somewhat, I take that to be the Pharisees who believed. Right, they would have had some authority. He already said he went up privately to those which were of reputation. That would be the apostles. Right. So then, but those people, those Pharisees which believed, they did also say, yeah. I don't know if I spelled that right. you got to be circumcised. You do see it? Yeah, you no, I can't. Uh, oh, my writing's too small? Well, it's your writing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's really, yeah. it is really it small. It just yeah. mushes together. Um, That's okay, I know what you said. Okay, now go back, now we're in Acts, yeah, look at Acts 15. In verse 6. Now we're going to have a separate meeting. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. Mm -hmm. So you got that one and that one, and these kind of are a subset there. And I'll see if I can write a little neater. Apostles and <laughs> elders. Much better, baby. Thanks. Now they're going to have a discussion. They're going to have a private meeting. Okay. They're going to come together and say, what do we do? Paul was not in that meeting. I don't take it to be. No, I, I think you're right. I don't think Paul was in that meeting. Um, because we're going to see that Peter's going to stand up and he's, he's going he's gonna to make a pronouncement in, in a little bit there. If you look at verse 7, okay, verse 6. And when the apostles and the elders came together for to consider of this matter. What's the matter? Circumcision. Cir circumcision. circumcision. Okay. And when there had been much disputing... Remember we talked, the Holy Spirit wouldn't have a bunch of people in the little flock disputing. No. Right? They're, 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 they're starting to work things. Yeah. Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my, by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So then Peter stands up, gives his explanation. Now I take this, I think the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. And after they had there been much disputing the same with Peter to me looks like he went back out publicly and made this because hmm. he talks about men and brethren oh whoa. Well, that not, he's not speaking only to the apostles and I don't take him. it to be that way I, I take it to be and I'll show you why here so, so um, yeah instead of apostles and elders it was men and brethren right 
I okay. Mean, that yeah. Look, look at verse eight. And, and God, yes, and God which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as He did unto us. Put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved, even as they. Uh -huh. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Paul and Bar to Barnabas and Paul. So now we have the multitude. So I, oh. it, here's here's how this works. Either you have Peter standing up in that private meeting with the apostles and the elders, and then they all go out and speak to the multitude. Mm -hmm. Or in verse six, they come to an issue. Peter finally has had enough, stands up and and goes up publicly and says, "This is this is what's happened, and everybody needs to know why I went to the Gentiles." Mm -hmm. So that's the way I take it. So then we have this whole multitude. There would not have been what was termed men in that private meeting. I, I, I think you're right. It would have been, I think as he did in verse 6, would have identified them as apostles or elders. Yeah. Something like that. So when he says men and brethren, I take that to be the, com multitude, the common multitude. folk. Yeah. yeah, the laity. The laity. Now you go back to Acts eleven two. They they took put Peter on the carpet over that issue already. He wasn't even supposed to be talking to Gentiles. Right. They made the issue, so it's not like he's presenting something new right here. Well, exactly. He's he's relating back to everybody what they already got him for. They said you shouldn't have done that. He said, well, God told me to, and he explained every bit of his dream and all that. Exactly. So this is not new information, but he's he's now standing up for what Paul Paul's doing because um, there's an issue. Exactly. It's like he's reminding them. Yeah, right. It's like he's reminding them that hey guys, don't forget, by my mouth, I went I was the first one that went to a Gentile to signify that salvation apart from Israel was happening. We're going to get into that version where it's Peter says, by my mouth, not our mouth. Yeah. Hmm. There's a lot going on there. Yeah. But but that's, he was the biggest authority on the planet. Right. At that time. Right. And now he can send and say, God, God told me. The program's changed. Now Paul's doing it. But through me, I went first. Yes. So I wonder why he didn't continue that way, but he just went right back to he, the he wasn't supposed to. He wasn't supposed to. He wasn't supposed to. His, his role he couldn't until Jerusalem got saved. Don't forget, oh, okay. he got he got a special okay. revelation okay. from God to go to Cornelius. Okay. He didn't make his own decision to do it, and no. he argued with God three times. <laughs> Haven't done it. Yeah. Never ate it. Never ate it. Never ate it. <laughs> they're at your door, Peter. <clears throat> no, they're ding dong. Oh, gotta go. <laughs> okay, I got it. You know, that'd be a real letdown to the Jews, the way that the Gentiles had to go through the Jews to the nation of Israel. Now that they have fallen, mm -hmm. there's no difference. So they've lost yeah. that. They've lost it. That, yeah. That status or that privilege. Mm -hmm. yep. Should have broken their heart. Yep. And it's interesting. This group that is actually part of the little flock, as they began to understand it, it should have totally broken their heart, because they're they're expecting seven eight years to go into the kingdom, yeah. and mm -hmm. now they realize it's fallen. It's probably not even gonna. Now they come to realize it may not even happen in our lifetime. We're out of money. We need Paul to go up to Greece and Asia and get some money for us, if you would. And then you would think, though, that the unbelievers, that that would get their attention. But right. you know, it, it just it just made a man. You see that group going there. You, yeah, they certainly say, you can't do that. You can't do that. And you can just, I think you're, you're totally, totally right. Uh, look at Acts 15, verse 22. Says, then it pleased the apostles and elders and the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barnabas, and Silas, chief among the brethren. So that lines up with Galatians 2 9. Which says, And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. So that's where Peter and James and John 
stop the um, the, great, the so-called Great Commission. But what I want you what, to see, oh, Galatians two nine. Yeah. Uh, we'll come back to that in, in a second. So then I think then you have everybody. Everybody comes together here in this Ephesians fifteen or Acts fifteen twenty two. It, it's everybody, you know, and they and they send Paul and Barnabas out with the letter. Yeah. So you know th these might be the same meeting too here. So that would be. You know, if this is one meeting, you got one, two, this is split into time, three, four, five, and this this could even. So you got at least at least four meetings, possibly seven there. Wow. The point I want you to take away from that is that these are these are humans. These are human beings that are that are working through these issues. And we struggle. I mean, how many times do we talk about this these very issues? Well, what happened with the little flock? Where's the little flock? What's going on in here? Did, and we have the, the full revelation of God. They're going through it trying to figure yeah, it out. Yeah, imagine being them, saying, yeah, yeah what's going on? Think Why did it change? Guy, yeah. Think about the guy that the day before Stephen got stoned said, yeah, I believe Jesus is my Messiah. I'm part of a little flock. Seven or eight years, I'm going to be ruling and reigning. Mm. You know, and, and think, things like that. But what I, I want you to see, there's a lot going on here. There's, a, there's discussions going on. And, and a, a big part of that is the issue that you see the 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 diminishing of that little flock and that and that program of that old program as a new program comes in if we were still fully under the pentecostal program first of all this wouldn't have happened it would have been very easy when those james would have sent those people out well it wouldn't have been james peter would have sent those people out and paul immediately would have understood their authority and agreed and there wouldn't have been a reason for this meeting but there there never would have been paul's Message anyhow. That would be the reason why, in I, think, I don't know if it's First Peter or Second Peter, was anyway. He says something about the people who that I forget how it's worded now, but you know they say well that, that Jesus comes back at some point. I mean that's not the exact. I, I can't remember exact words, but Peter, uh, he's more or less. In other words, people were would be have been disappointed, and well, I mean they say he's come back. I don't believe he's come back. I mean it's. It's, uh, oh, yeah. it's not happening. And uh, so Peter's more or less, uh, I forget how he worded it, but... Uh, that, Scoffers. That, yeah, yeah. But that'd be what he referred to. That's exactly. Yeah. And again, I mean, there's a there's a, a wonderful issue of the providence of God. Peter's addressing that issue of people bringing up that, and because of that, he's writing a book. And then we have that book. And there's things for us in that book. You know, it, it, it's a great thing. Um we're done here, but let's look over it while we got got our Bibles open to it. Look over at Galatians two nine. I'm looking for something. Oh good. So you guys, I'll just read you. You don't need, look, don't need to look over here. This is Matthew 16, 17. 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, not Peter, but what he said, I will build my church, and that's the little flock, and the church of the body of Christ, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is what I want to get. And I will give unto thee, Peter, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on the earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I want you to understand the authority that the Lord Jesus Christ just gave Peter. You bind it on earth, Pete, it's bound in heaven. You loose it down here, Pete, it's loosed in heaven. Mm -hmm. That's authority. Yeah, totally. That's authority. I'm going away, Pete. You're in charge. Okay. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, let's come over to the Galatians 2.9. And I'll read this to you again. When James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the rights and of fellowship, that we should go into the heathen, 
and they unto the circumcision. So if they're going to the circumcision, now this is Peter, James, and John have declared this. Yeah. We've seen the discussions the going on. The, it. the disputings, the back and forth, the, the, the human um, decision-making process coming out. I'm not going to say it's devoid of the Holy Spirit, but it's the humans working some things out here. And Pete said, Peter says, you know what? You go to the heathen, and mm -hmm. we're going to go to the circumcision. Now, is that what Jesus told Peter to do? Didn't Jesus tell Peter to go to the world? Right. Jerusalem, okay. And what, and what is today called the Great Commission? Well, right. Peter here says, okay, we're just going to go to the circumcision. We're going to go to the Jews only. Okay, so there you see, hmm. before it even gets off the ground, the so-called Great Commission is halted. Right, right. Pete says, we're not going to do that program anymore. Huh. And we just read where whatever Peter loosed on the earth was loosed in heaven. So Peter loses, looses, re, re, releases, if I can put it that way, themselves from having to do what we today call the Great Commission. And he was just going to focus on the circumcision, just the Jews. It's Paul that's going to go to the world now. Right. And Peter says, Paul, you go to the world, we'll go here. And we just saw how much authority Jesus gave Peter. Right, right. Because the, the commission's a new commission. There's no sign that that was ever revoked. It's never been revoked. You're exactly right. And it couldn't be. And I know, I know, we under, it couldn't be because we're still in the dispensation of grace. Well, it'll, it'll. When, when the rapture, come back again. yeah, when the yeah. rapture happens and the Church of Body of Christ leaves, this program will be right by right. The, the great, the, the great commission will be back in, right, in, in, in full flow now. One more thing I want to see, want you to see on this verse while we're here, and this is a freebie. Where did Paul say? Where did Peter say he was going to go? To who? To the, uh, to the circumcision. Jews, right? Yeah. Where are the Jews? Jerusalem. Well, no, but Jerusalem. Oh, yeah, right. No, right. no, you're right. Jerusalem, right? He's going to oh, stay there. Oh, oh. Okay. Well, even if they're everywhere. That, that, okay. If he's going to the circumcision, he's going to be if, right there. If, in, if he's in going Jerusalem. to the Jews in Jerusalem, where is he not going? To America? To the Specifically in the world, where is he not going? With Gentiles that are in, located in which city? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Rome. Oh, no. You know any church that tells you Peter went to Rome? Oh, okay. And Peter was the first pope? <laughs> that verse makes you understand Peter is not the first pope. Peter was never in Rome. There's no biblical evidence that Peter was ever in huh. Rome. They just made all that stuff They just made all that stuff up. Oh, you <laughs> we started. We talked earlier about the, the different Bible versions. That's where, if you just look at a verse and, and just think about it a little bit, you see, you know what? Yeah, if he was going to the circumcision, he wouldn't be going. You to got Rome. what? Yeah, eighteen hundred years of tradition. Totally. Billions of people, unfortunately, probably going to hell, based on the fact that Peter was the first pope, Man. when he wasn't, because that verse tells you he never went to Rome. And he specifically never went to the Gentiles in Rome. Even if he did go to Rome, he didn't go to set up a church of body yeah. of Christ. He was going he to already the told him, circumcision. He said, I'm, I'm going to the circumcision. Mm -hmm. And that's him, that's himself saying that. That's, yeah, that's the guy that, the, that that same church says Peter's the rock, not his statement's the rock. Mm -hmm. Which is blasphemy in itself. There's only one rock in the Bible, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. So. Anyhow, we're still working through through Acts 15, and, and I know we're going slow, but I think it's important that we understand what's well, for sure going there, on in this, sure. in this yeah. meeting. Uh, let me say a word of prayer. I don't think we started with prayer, let's, but we should definitely end with prayer. Let's add this to it. Yes. And 2 Peter 3.15, I'll read it to you. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. You go. The connection there. That's right. Yeah, he's he's backing up. Well, and that's what's the reference? Second Timothy. Second Peter. It's Second Peter. It's the Second very Peter. end of Second Peter. Okay. The last few words Peter wrote. Second, Second Peter three fifteen. Yep. And and what what he's saying is the scoffers that are saying Lord Jesus Christ isn't coming. You see, if you want to understand why Lord Jesus Christ doesn't come, go read Paul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why now you see how the two programs kind of help each other out. The yep. little flock wants to know where. where where is he? Well, go for Paul will tell you why. Okay, let me say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the day and the opportunity to come together and study your word. And, and Lord, my prayer for all of us is that we just would have a heart of 
belief that we would as much as possible leave our own personal prejudices interpretations on the shelf and just let your Bible rightly divided be the authority let the words just mean what the natural use of the words means as we look at that may we remember that that these are real people going through real things certainly being driven by the Holy Spirit but that everything that we're seeing here in the book of Acts is just a testament of the fall of Israel and explaining what happened to Israel and how salvation is now possible to the Gentiles through their fall we thank you for the simplicity of that plan and that it relies on the work of your son on the cross and not any great deeds or work or toiling on our part, Lord. We give you praise, we give you glory in all things. In your name, amen. Amen. amen.